So there you go. Uh, so Gérald is here with us. I already um, kind of explained to, to the participants here um, before, but we just ask you if you can visually introduce yourself as well as verbally when you present yourself, Gérald. So like just a short description, like I'm Chloe, I have blonde hair, I'm wearing a red sweater, and behind me is the Tour de Moon logo. Uh, so this will just help anyone who's blind and partially sighted to distinguish your voice and the voices of anyone else who's speaking. And we also have the closed captioning enabled as well. So, Gérald, I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. I am Gérald. Um, today, I am wearing um, sort of a purple and red, maybe, uh, switch. I don't know how to call it, a blazer, maybe. I don't know. Uh, like that, a tank top. I have rounded glasses. I have a bang, like a short bang. Um, makeup blue bluish uh, i have beard today i'm white with like ambiguity and um and i am at, at my neighbor's house because the internet is crazy in belgium so i had to find a refuge not a refuge radio but a place so um, behind me is like a big window with a reflection of a light and some like retro furniture somehow um I was just worried that you don't need a break. But no, you're fine. Everybody's happy. We can go. We can move on. Everyone yeah. good. Everything okay. super. So I'm going to try to share this screen with you. Uh, I prepared a little uh, PowerPoint here. Is this working at all? Is the one? I think you should be able to share your screen now. Ah, thank you. Uh, up. Otherwise, I have um, prepared the, the same, the same, uh, oh, I have to open my, yes. Ah, okay, it asked me to quit, to quit and come back to Zoom. So maybe I will send you a link to, it, it will be easier. I will send you a link in the conversation to the same uh, PowerPoint, but online. And then we can follow it together. Uh, yeah. the chat here? Oh. Well, here you should get um, you should get the link to the to the online um, PowerPoint. And I will also send you the link to another document that I wanted to share with you, which is the link, the, the page of the links of the videos I wanted to show you on the way. So, up. Do you want to try again, Jad? Because I think I changed something so that you could share your screen. Ah, okay. Ah, might be better. Ah, yes, uh, it's yeah. Super, parfait. So, okay, before I jump to this um, prepared document, I can just tell you a bit about me. Um, I am, um, I define myself as a musician, but I, I use a lot of the practices of performance to, to unwrap what I understand as being music and especially vocal music. Um, I have studied visual arts I, in the 2000, like I ended the school around 2000, 2007, 2008. And then I got involved into two postgraduate programs. One was dedicated to electroacoustic music. And the other one is, um, is the one I am now currently in. It's called La Cooperative de Recherche. And it's a collective place where we basically give tenderness and, and interest to research and art, and especially to collective, to the way to share practices within within the, the realm of research. So how can, uh, how can I be useful to another or how can I make myself available to others in the frame of research? And this is in Clermont-Ferrand in, uh, in France, so in the center of France, but I am living in Brussels and I'm, my studio is in Brussels. So all the things that I do are basically here. And, uh, and I am connected to the scene, mainly to the French scene 
and the Belgian scene, but I, I have shown my work, performative work, um, mostly, I mean, on, on an international level, mostly in Europe, but sometimes in North America, it happened. Um, rarely, rarely out of this privileged uh, cloud of like North, the North, like North America, Northern Europe. Um, voilà, so it's to be questioned, but it's it's actually how the how the, the production of contemporary art uh, made me travel until now. It, and it's to be questioned for the future, but I will talk about that later. Um, so I, today I wanted to talk about voice, um, but voice really understood from many different aspects. And I actually realized when I started working on that lecture that, the, um, that if I went chronologically, um, there was a kind of a logic, um, like, um, sort of like moments of research around voice. So I'm going to follow this, this PowerPoint that I did. Um, I have big titles with dates, and then I, I have projects I can talk about. And um, if you need anything, please just interrupt me. I want to be, I want to be unhappy about it. So um, starting with this uh, body of work that I, I am compassed under the umbrella term of inappropriate voices. So um, I was during the, all my studies and also when I started to, to play as a musician in the world, um, because I was uneducated on the level of, on, I mean, on all performative practices and on all compositional practices, everything was self-taught. Um, but like, um, as an art student would do in the 2000s, so we were quite, we were quite crafty, we were quite uh, um, also a bit punk and with an interest in like doing things ourselves. So I started writing songs and performing with like no um, specific skills on an academic level, let's say, but with, of course, a strong interest. But this thing of like imposter syndrome was very, was was present, but also a tool, like was also something that, that I could find energy in and find excitement in, in the fact of like playing the disruptive body or like the body who was not necessarily allowed to do things. So I started like that alone up to the point where I, I thought, but this is actually, a, it's, an, it's an important uh, statement to allow inappropriate voices to speak out or to take the mic. So um, the first project I, I, um, I started to, I started to, uh, that helped me understand that thing very clearly was this project called Les, Ar Les Îles Artificielles, Artificial Islands. Um, it also had an English title which was basically me staying in an in a insurance company for three months with the, with the employees and interviewing them every day on, a, I mean, not every, not, not every, I would interview them maybe eventually every twice a week, let's say, but about their everyday life. And especially about the, their internal monologue, like all the thoughts that were crossing their minds while working on the place of the office. Um, so we ended up making this sort of like, um, I'd say, set specific uh, musical where the, the employees would sing um, what their thoughts were while working. And while doing this, were then seeing the movements that they were doing on a daily basis. And this was, I mean, there is a video. I, I put the link if you want to listen to it, but I would rather take time, video time for other documents. But it's just to explain that this first experience was very moving because I was um, discovering that a voice, all the, all the affective um, power of a voice that's not educated. So a voice that's just get discovering what it means to take space maybe, or to, in, to aff affirm something, to speak about, to externalize the internal world. Um, and also the collaboration with people who were, who were not specifically, um, um, how can I say, uh, had no desire to shine or to become stars or whatever, like really people who were just working in an office and enjoying uh, doing experiments. So this was um, this was the first, uh, let's say, fit in, uh, into, into this uh, awareness, which took me uh, to another project called Hot Bodies Camp. And there I had to do a break because I'm a break in the in the talk because I have to talk to you about the hot bodies of the future projects. So in 2017, because I was 
because I was uh, unhappy about the fact that as a singer, I was always confronted to very non-politicized um, uh, desires. So the, the professional people who were helping me tour, the people I was I was playing with, the, the bands I was meeting or the artists I was meeting seemed to be a bit um, in an escapism. Um, something something in them was sort of avoiding the subjects have, uh, that uh, that the, even on a, that that the, the, the music world was was holding. So, for example, representation, but also the content, like who was allowed to say what. Um, I, I, I I like sometimes to have like flamboyant. Uh, close and I would get feedbacks from my co collaborators or my managers who would say like it's a bit too gay or maybe you should beware like things that were extremely violent and um, so at some point I stopped working with these people and I decided to answer these violences in in the in the, in the, in the shape of a project called Hot Bodies of the Future where I would observe and allow the 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 min minority bodies to use the the tools of music to use the tool tools of the club and to use music production um, to push further their revolution. So I would sort of connect my activist life and the the possibility to speak out that uh, that a musical project and I say musical project as compositional, but also uh, what it means to put up a party to. Uh, create a record company to facilitate the access to the mic, to share the mic or to share the, share the economy. So this project, Hot Bodies of the Future, is now since 2017 my sort of my field of research and all the projects I do connect to these questions in one way or another. So one of the projects, all the bodies, um, all the all the projects, um, almost all of them start with like Hot Bodies underscore something. So the um, one of them is called Hot Bodies Camp, um, and that. In that uh, project, we um, I work with um, with the students of mechanics, like uh, car mechanics students, um, to build uh, an, uh, the possibility to live in a car. Right, so they sort of pimp a car for for a few months and um, and invent um, one track that could be the sort of the the, the music if 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 their fiction so they connect to a fiction if their fiction had to be a musical what would be what would be the main track so they write the track of the musical connected to the fiction in which they get inspiration for the pimping up of this car so um, that's so you get the picture here you can uh, it's the same in the in the sheet of um did I send you the link to this document? I'm not sure. Let me check. Chat. I, I think I did. Um, yeah, voilà. The second, the second one, um, the second one, the document gives you the the list of all the li the links. So you can. Uh, it's called Hot Bodies Camp. You can you can look at it later, or if we have time, we can look at it together. But as I said, I, I'd rather uh, share more things later. Um, yeah, video. So I did a little reference, <laughs> some little reference pages. So in that case, Jacques Denis being this French um, movie director who really influenced uh, musicals in the 60s, extremely uh, not revolutionary at all, very problematic on a lot of levels, but the, the, the question of like high culture and low culture is interesting for me there uh, jean gabriel perio who's like this um, cinema director in the he's still, he's still active who i worked with with uh, in the form of a project we did in uh, in, in jail and christophe Noré. all these guys are could be could have like a, i mean i don't value a hundred percent what they did but they are definitely they were definitely very present in the in that moment but let's talk about that later so this was the introduction of like inappropriate uh, voices. And then I thought I'm using this uh, extimacy uh, expression. It's a bit intellectual, uh, don't blame me. But um, so this, this extimacy being the answer of the intimacy. So an intimacy that becomes a collective um, a place, like a, a connective space. Um, I started without without really realizing in 2018, I started to make this shift of like being interested in, so of course, P 
people voicing what they had to say, speaking out what they had to say, but also um, affects, like what were the affects connected to these voices? So how can singing voice, like really, and then I, I will really speak about technical, uh, vocal technique, how can vocal technique can help us connect to affect, so to political emotions? Um, and, and voice being this place of um, very specific acoustic phenomenon, very specific frequency that allows us to receive, of course, the, the interpersonal information, but also maybe the political uh, content of the of the of the of the of the expression. So um, one of the probably the biggest project to do so in my life, and it's still active today. So it started in 2018, but it's it's still going on. Is called Hot Body Squires. So in that pro in that project, we have a, it, it started as a workshop. So the principle is that we get together with people who are willing to speak about um, feminism, uh, queer politics, um, post-colonial studies, um, um, trans uh, politics, uh, xenofeminism, glitch feminism, like all all these all these um, theoret theoretical slash practical clouds that we can. I want to to either know more or or practice or defend today. So we get together, we read together uh, documents or we watch movies that are connected to these all these issues. We share to get we we choose together, and then we have conversations. And from these conversations, we write texts, and these texts are then arranged musically in two different different ways. Either the people composed by themselves, and I will talk about that in details because it's the it's where the vocal technique uh, sort of appears, the emotional, political, um, sens sensorial uh, vocal technique appears. And the other one is me composing electronic music for them. So um, I will share with you. So if you can go directly to the link number three, if you have... Uh... Link number three. Oh no, yes, link number three should get you to a place online. I don't want to share with you the video, but if you you can go on your on your own browsers and maybe listen to one minute, one minute thirty. Would it be okay to do so? Uh, just for you to know, the group that the group that you're seeing is the. Um, is an, is is the is the group of the hot body squire in Paris. So they are still active today. We we managed to work throughout the years together, and also they continued without me for quite some time. Um, and the work and the sorry and the 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 song that they are singing is uh, is based on uh, Les Guerrières de Monique Wittig. It's it's a book where Monique Wittig describes the um, describes the collectivity of of girls women we don't it's it's not really clear uh they maybe they're very young maybe they're very old and they, they do all sorts of stuff so they they eat together they kill men they have sex they sleep they they live in a place that's not really described it's like a utop, to, total utopia revolutionary utopia um it's very very powerful uh, so we take one minute to listen to that one minute 30 let's say
I will start again. <laughs> um, we can uh, we can discuss um, electronic technique after like musical technique if you want. Most of my tracks are made with Ableton Live, uh, but I like to twist something so I can share that later. Um, so, voilà. So that's so th that's what we do, we did. We started with like uh, we started to write this song. Um, so it's it's in French. It, bon, if you need translation, you can we can always discuss afterwards. Or if you want to attend one workshop, of course you're you're welcome. We did one with the Manchester group last year for a festival. And um, so, what I uh, yeah what I what I'm what I was interested in following this experience with them. So we wrote uh, since uh, that first song up to now. We wrote uh, maybe 20, 25 tracks. Um, three or three of them are really arranged. Two of them are like. In, in process and the rest are 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 spells I will I will explain afterwards um, in in a few seconds just just to say that um, the the question was for me the, the the rituals like in 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 the Western in the Western uh, uh, world is um, it's, it's 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 strange it's bizarre um, I come from a Turkish uh, family. And we have a lot of like um, superstition. Like yeah, we have a lot of uh, things we you shouldn't do, or you, you, we are we're surrounded with like powers, like you know things that you that are happening if you do something like that or not. When I studied in art school, all this all of this was very very challenged because I was supposed to become analytical and to be to be a bit skeptical about things. And it was for, it's still it's still for me a, like sort of a mind. Uh, a problem in my mind and uh, when we started to do the choir something very very powerful was happening and for me it had to do with some kind of ritual like some answer to to the impossibility of saying something or the, the impossibility as a as, as someone who's born as a female so a fat person to speak out to speak about uh, blood to speak about uh, um, uh, strict uh, cat calling or like things that were not necessarily easy to speak out um, in general, so um, I thought a lot about like the the the, the importance and the, the 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 role of voice in in what we could call contemporary rituals, and uh, and I came up with this uh, the, the the question of like of of where does the energy of voice come from? So where what is the what is the energetical trigger of voicing, and especially when we start to say. Um, I'm going to say real things, but not that they are. The rest are not true, but or real. But when when we start to connect to memory, like when we start to have a connection to memory, uh, which I think is the absolute purpose of music. I think music is highly connected to memory, and in all aspects. I love the music because I know I, I recognize part of it. I um, I love. I, I'm I'm sure like that a lot of a lot of the list the musical listening is about recognition and the the re the re the cognitive re staging of like an emotional context or or sensorial context or so I started to work around that and um, and discovered that vocal technique was uh, could also be a bit um, uh, made a bit magical and um, I started to work on my own on uh, my organs. So I tried to I tried to sing. So I don't know how how many of you are practicing vocals. I guess many of you, but um, so you probably know about like the what we call the head voice, the the chest voice. I don't know if it's the right uh, transition though, but uh, we call it la voix de poitrine, la voix de tête, la voix mixed mixed voice. Um, and then there are deeper voices that are not necessarily uh, talked about, but the energy is very different if you find your energy in the in the thorax, or if you find your energy in your under your belly button, or in your perineum, or in your feet. And I realized that the the lowest I would get in my body. So if I start from the throat, so the first zone would be a bit like this heart, warm, had this like texture, like very very sulky, very warm uh, place. 
but also connected to the arms, to the to the hands, so so to maybe connected to gestures like like holding, like uh, like um, uh, embracing, like the connections, like the, the chest, like the, the the warm chest, you know, and uh, and then going lower, uh, stomach, liver, um, pancreas, uh, uh, blood, uh, do you call it uh, spleen, spleen, la la rat. Spin. Um, so all that, that that zone much more nervous. So if I if I would sing if I if I started to sing from that place, things were really very, yeah, very nervous. Very a lot of anger, a lot of anger. I mean, for me, a lot of anger. Then going down more, maybe more of an erotic, more sexual energy. So something I could I could really easily relate to. Not even I, I, it was not even imagination. It was really like very immediate and very spontaneous. So I started to share that, and based on that, we um, started this practice that we called we called we called mantra for two months, and then said no, I, I, we're not going to call it like that. C'est un problème. So we call it spells. And uh, so basically, people are invited to connect to one place in their body. They to either uh, the ones that I just said, for example, the heart, the the, the liver, or whatever, and to sort. To, to start to voice on an abstract level, melody. So when I say melody, it's really like, blah, 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 like really very simple things, but based on this um, long investigation of what emotions are contained in that zone of the body and what and how this zone can eventually create a state more on a, on a physical, global uh, level. And based on that, they write what we call spells, so mini, mini, mini songs, like songs that are a bit circular songs, very tiny songs, um, that have the purpose to communicate with these emotions. And, and if we add a bit of magic to maybe act on the emotional memory of what is spoke, being spoken of. So for that, the example, you can go to the link the following, the link that goes just after the one I just gave you. Um, too many windows, of course. Uh, here, it's, yeah, it's called, it's the, um, I can put it in the chat. I don't have access to the chat anymore. I, Voilà. So, so this song is called Ejaculate. It's, um, it's a song that um, a trans person, a uh, trans man uh, wrote in Vienna, reclaiming the possibility to, to first to that ejaculate is, uh, should, be, should be available to all the bodies. And, uh, and also, um, so you will see in the in the video the singers are describing places in the in their body because um, that person was insisting on the fact that energy was um, you could not disconnect parts from the other so they tried to 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 connect to all the, all the parts of their body you will see it uh, in in the video I think it's clear so we take uh, the time of that. Ah, am I maybe not allowed to share with you? Hmm. Is it working? Which is it? Uh, ejaculate one. Yes, it's. Yeah. it's uh, let me see. Uh, ejaculate. I think it should be ejaculate one. Yes. Ah, yeah. I send you the. I know it should be a video. It should be a video. Uh, hmm. Ah, yes, ejaculate when the video. Yes, exactly. Sorry.
Voilà, so this, um, this practice, we continue to do it now. Um, I'm trying to really investigate in that and to maybe um, get a bit more detailed about like what which organ carries or how can we project more things on different organs. Um, if you are interested in joining the, the the workshops, of course, be 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 welcome. We will try. To, we're working next year on a on a on like on a go on a big piece, like an hour long piece. Um, voilà. For the refs, well, of course, suffragettes. So uh, the feminist uh, demonst the protest people. Um, I, I I'm sure you know about them, but if if not, we can. Talk about it afterwards. Le phare is the Front Homosexuel d'Action Révolutionnaire, like a, a gay, like a gay. When I say gay, it's like including all the all the um, uh, deviants, uh, revolutionary action group. Uh, Colin Self, the Berlin-based uh, American singer who has this choir, choir um, project. Amazing, Helena Dietrich, based in Brussels, who does amazing singing classes called Divine Voice. Amazing, amazing, very interesting. And of course, um, L'International Feminist, which is this this song. The um, it's like it's a feminist song that you you would hear all across, uh, um, of course, the Western world. But um, voilà, so. Again, we can talk about the, the rest later. So um, then, so once I have I had had traveled, I have traveled to these these like extremacy groups. Um, also, of course, something I didn't speak of is the the, the very important uh, collectivization of the of the work of the voice. So because it's it's one person writing the text and eventually one person writing the melody, then it's the whole group to to be the voice, to become the, the mega, the extended, the augmented voice of that person. So it's also, it also has this very trans transpersonal, um, uh, and I think very important uh, um, responsabilization of us as singers to, to think, to think the, the voicing of someone else and maybe to enter also the emotion or the, or the affective memory of another. So um, of course it's, it's one of the purpose. It's not the only one, but it's one of the purpose. So then, after these experiments, I had to come back a bit to me, <laughs> to me alone. Um, not that I forgot about them because we were still working on on um, things together. But I had to to also question um, loneliness and and I mean, I, I individuality and subjectivization. Also, the question of like subjectivation, subjectivization. And as I sensed, the I was sending the. The, these two refs, so the cyborg manifesto from Donna Haraway and the glitch uh, feminism, which is this amazing document. I mean, it's it's a video, a, a, like video lecture you can find online and also a publication. In both these um, literatures, we are strongly invited to consider technologies and especially new technologies um, as a possibility to 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 glitch, to queer up, to to disrupt um, uh, dominant narratives. So in 2018, 19, um, I was try I was looking for ways to escape the bad, like the the LGB the LGB world that not that I disliked it but something about it about it was a bit maybe too it was a bit like a mimic cry of straight of the straight world for me or something like that so I needed something more fluid also for myself I was starting my uh, transition, so I'm 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 still on the way. It takes time, um, but I needed this like I didn't needed these people to tell me maybe with electronic music, maybe with with tools with, with with instruments, I can start to shift. I can start to to let myself glide into what I am or I would like to be. So I call it becoming cyborg, <laughs> and. Um, uh, this track, you could listen to it later because I'm very bad with time and I would like us to have a talk. So this track is just, it was interesting because it was the first time. So it's called DDW for Philippe. It's a track, an electronic music track. It's very, um, very abstract. It's just that it's the first time I did a track only with the sound of his voice. So he he was speaking a text and I... I took it and I cut it and I used a lot of granul granular synthesis. I don't know if you you know about them. It's like micro sampling. Um, 
So I, I used mac macro sampling. I used um, a lot of like um, uh, deter deterior deteriorating uh, VSTs on on my uh, little computer, and I came up with this like sort of like ambient track, um, which is for me an image of his voice, like a holographic image of image of his voice, a bit like a club track. Um, also at that moment, the club culture. I mean, I'm, I'm DJing since a, a long time, but the club culture started to make a lot of sense also for me when it came to like put and it, when it came to think about putting bodies in a state, um, liberating uh, sexual energy, um, uh, allowing uh, allowing just bodies to to move out what they needed to move out. Um, so so this 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 uh, flirt with like electronic music from clubs was interesting for me because I, I was I was mainly writing love songs before, and I and I and it it opened the way to um, to a project an electronic music project called Tarek X. So Tarek X being a sort of a, um, I mean, a, a game with like my Armenian name, which is Arek, and the fact that I'm, um, I mean, well, a little joke, finding an avatar, trying to to slide out of like the, the figure. So I tried to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to find an image, uh, but bon, it was, you know, sometimes you try things. And um, and the first, uh, the first uh, single, like the first track that I released, uh, for real was called fairies so um, it was of course a direct um, um, how do I say a call or like a, a wink a direct wink to my sisters my fairy sisters so the radical fairies being this mostly gay trans femme but mostly gay um, political movement that values the 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 the, the, the possibility for a group to 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 host the difficulty of being um, a gay person in the world so this means hosting means like cooking for but also means giving a massage also means allowing uh, an erotic um, an unlimited an unlimited uh, erotic uh, expression but also why not uh, games with gender but I wouldn't call it really trans because it's it's a bit different but oh. so it was a direct calling to direct ring to this community um so I would be, I would love for us to listen to it um the link is just the next one on our collective document today is it the next one no oh, yeah it's the number six so fairies it should come as a as an audio on the drive well so if we can listen to it maybe let's say two minutes until it uh, sort of starts a bit then to become too dense. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm super teasing, but um, I mean, the track is there, it's, it's available. Um, so what I wanted to talk about with this track is that it's the first step in my sort of artistic metamorphosis somehow. Um, I mean, not that I always sing with that voice, but I use it a lot and, it, it, and I'm going to explain why. So first I'm going to talk a bit technique because I, I think you all compose music. So that's maybe useful. Uh, so what I started to, when I started to look for a, 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 like a, a vocal, a vocal tool, um, something that would allow me to become someone else, but um, that to become someone else or to become someone that I could be, but that was not my organic voice. Um, I had in my, in my studio, I had this like Electro Harmonix V256 um, pedal, which is a vocal pedal, but it, that's, it's really garage. It's really dirty. Like the, 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 the uh, how do you say the, the, the electronic com components of it are really like first, first degree electronic components. So they are, they are rough and they, and they and they, they are the, it's this it's really not not clean but it, but it can be cool in some aspects it has some uh, it has an interesting um, grain uh, interesting texture but it was um, it it would it would give the musical information but it wouldn't give the the like the the the, the movement of a presence like the, the the movement of an emotion so I changed and I went to this uh, Edicon Voice Live. First, I had the second one, and then I had the third, and now I have the extreme three. And for me, up to now, I, it's the one I prefer for live, uh, especially in, in live, uh, live conditions, because it's quite flowy. And if you if you work well, if you uh, parameter, if you use the parameters well, it, it's it's very active and very it's very it's actually very musical. I feel. I feel it's very musical. I also had the, this uh, VT3 from Roland, uh, but it's. I think it's. It's much. It's not really interesting for the pitch, but it's very, very interesting for the auto tune. Uh, it's really like a very versatile auto tune um, uh, device. Um, en plus. I, I went, I, I was also interested in working with like VST or like it within the computer. So these the three, uh, these three uh, soft, like collection of softs are amazing. So GRM tools are, it's really fantastic. They're extremely exp expensive, but, but if you can find them for a friend or like crack them, it's um, because it's really like electroacoustics for dummies, you know, so it's really very, very strong, very, very interesting and not too crazy in terms of like using your, the CPU, the, your computer's memory. Um, the IRCAP, so GRM is a, it's a, it's an old, um, it sort of finishes, it finished existing, but it's, a, it's an experimental lab, a sonic electroacoustic lab from, uh, connected to the French national radio. L'IRCAM is, uh, is like a center, like a new technology center applied to sound and uh, acoustics and a lot of other very, uh, very, very pointu, very uh, future. <laughs> they're a bit on the edge of everything all the time, but they're very, very involved in like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, um, and also, uh, how do you say, a generative music and everything. But uh, they also have a collection of amazing effects, um, but that 
for me are really unusable for live conditions because they have always like a delay and like a latency and it, it makes me crazy. And of course I used Melodyne. I don't know if it's Melodyne or Melodyne. I don't know how to pronounce it in English, but this Melodyne is fantastic. Uh, I love this, uh, this software. So it's, um, it's something that allows you to once you recorded your voice, your vocal track, but it can be any any voice, could be an instrument voice or a, a, a physical voice, like a body voice. Um, it allows you to to reshape it to on a, on a scale, so you can write choirs and you can, um, of course, put things in tune if you are a bit unprecise. But but also, I mean, it's really a very interesting tool. So these are the tools that I started using for for the Tahik X project. Uh, and I just, <laughs> I just, I just wanted to stress to insist on the fact that everything is in really the co a, a good combination between the format and the pitch. Uh, format being like really the shape, the timber of the sound, and the pitch being the height. The height. And uh, I think uh, I'd be, I'd, I'm, I'm super happy if we, if you want, we can get online together and just like work, work these knobs. But um, voilà, so that that that's for Tarek uh, I released many songs, but because it's 10 to 8, I think I still have 10 minutes or 14 minutes. I, I don't remember. You still have uh, like 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Okay, so I have to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, just before we before we stop, because of course I, I'm... I have more, much more to say. Um, just to tell you that I, 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 I am. More, I, I just finished Friday, last Friday, um, a, a performance like an opera piece, where I um, use I use a lot of. Um, uh, so I compose the opera with an AI, and I use a lot of um, MIDI controlled. Um, so I control vocoders with MIDI, MIDI machines to create choirs, and it's really fantastic. Uh, so when I'm really done, I will record it and I can share it with you and invite you to the show. I just wanted to tell you that if you wanted to talk more about voice and tech, we can because my, my arms are, I'm like full on in it. And uh, voilà. So let's let's uh, let's open the conversation now and I can connect. We have 11 minutes together. Yes. Hello. <laughs> hello. Um, Very nice to meet you. Nice like, to meet hi. You. I'm Odessa, I guess, like, yeah, I'm wearing a green dress. Um, I'm in my dining room right now. And yeah, like, the talk so far was, like, really, really interesting. Ooh, let me just move to the other side. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I just have, like, a question about using AI, like, and generative composition. Like, I've studied it, like, in my full-time university course, graduated and stuff, and, like, I have, like, worked with a few, like, notebooks, and I've generated a few models. Uh, one thing that I find, though, is that, like, working directly with machine synthesis, it takes a lot of time and takes a lot of, like, actual energy or, like, computing processing power to, like, basically generate stuff. And like, I'm not entirely like happy with like the stuff that I get from like training stuff using MIDI and control. Are there any more interesting ways of using AI or generative stuff in a performing mm. manner? Mm. Well, I am going to be disappointing, but uh, but it's okay because I chose AI as um, I chose to work with AI specifically because it was disappointing. Because when I was studying electroacoustics, I was already working on with the with the Ableton and like Reaper. Like I was working on, in my computer. I was very used to, to working with my computer. And my teachers were saying, yes, but um, you're not you're you're losing 70% of your creativity if you buy a VST. So people who sell VSTs are are basically choosing the sounds for you. No, no, no. And I was like, yes, but I mean, how about DJing? You know, DJing is is it's it's a question of like editing, and I can I can uh, think of like uh, Terry Temlitz being extremely articulate in what it means to remix to really decide of the placements of instrument, for example. Even if like let's say eighty percent of the content is chosen. So when I started to speak to think about opera, I was thinking, ah, opera is such a bourgeois, such a white it's it's such a white practice that I wanted to almost create a feedback loop, you know, to say. Okay, so we're going to go into like hyper deceptive composition. So the thing I came up with are very, very basic. So they go 
the physicality is totally out. So for me, I would, I, I think I lost hope. Uh, the seventh minute I tried working with a guy uh, who was, who had like an algorithm um, uh, knowledge and everything. And I was like, okay, no, I, we will never get somewhere um, like, um, uh, cr critical. We can never be critical against this thing. We have to be. We have to use it in its in its uh, annoying, uh, mechanical, and you know. So that's where I am now. Although I have to say that when the when the the logic of an algorithm algorithm is applied to to vocalizing through machine, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of strong. There's a struggle of the body that's very. Very interesting. And then I, I have to quote uh, Holly Herndon, of course, uh, 20 million times, and Colleen again. But um, I would agree with you. I would agree with, with you that it's not it's not really satisfying musical uh, progress, but it's useful for critical practices, I think. I would put it like that. Yeah, thanks. Like, yeah, like... I found like kind of similar, like with Holly Herndon, a lot of the time with working with generative stuff is that you spend a lot more time actually like curating and like going through like hours and hours of content rather than actually making music. And <laughs> that's not something any artist wants to do. <laughs> yeah. No, no, and I should know what I want to do. I only acoustic things. <laughs> I started, I, were, I, I was, um, I was, I was planning my next year and I thought I would really just like take bass classes again and go back to like really playing and what my body can do as an answer. So might be a partially a, an answer to what you say. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for your answer. <laughs> Does anyone else have any any questions or anything they want to bring up? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi, thank you so much. It was so interesting to hear all about all your different projects. So it sounded really, really interesting. I was interested in, was it ejaculation where it was um, looking at where the voice relates to the part of the body? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was wondering if you'd done work with instrumentalists relating to instruments. Oh, that's so interesting. And I haven't. I mean, um, I, I have worked with the drummer um with whom we had very uh we had interest in like going in places of like maybe letting rhythm let, like rhythm letting your tempo out for a moment and just like getting in states and and go and go where we had to go but um but i i never i never actually tried with the instrumentist and now it's it would be amazing it would be really amazing but i think it would be amazing and um, it connects to what I was saying to your camarade, which was um, um, I'm 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 discovering that I'm building interest in in like playing music now. I've been I've been working with computers like for 15 years now. Maybe uh, I'm DJing with my with Ableton Live, which is a uh, which is I, I'm, I'm DJing with my fingers. Like it's it's really I have I'm very uh, nerdy when it comes to like uh, electronics electronic music. But the the but the strength of presence and the and the the, the demands of like uh, instrumental music is unique and uh, and I I have this like temptation of maybe try to let go a bit of the computer in the next years to see how we can you know how we can like find the same things I'm thinking of like um, uh, their name. Uh, um, Marina Herlop, Marina Herlop, uh, who released a record like very recent, I mean, an amazing record on Pan very recently. Um, the live that they she does, what they do, is uh, only acoustics, and and they are and that person is a master of like computer music, like really, or master. I don't know. I don't want to use. Uh, sorry for English, but so I learned from this. You know, people like studio nerds. Uh, live music i think 
getting the computer on stage now is a question for me. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. So if you're interested in trying, we can try <laughs> together. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be up for it. I'd be interested to see what instruments um, like and what pitches relate to different parts of different bodies mm. and maybe mm. in different bodies, different like. Yeah. Well, the, the the reception of like acoustic vibration is is already quite a thing. I mean, from going from piano, who's like which is like extremely frontal and like uh, where you're you're really like a membrane and uh, I don't know, for example, guitar. That's really very located because you, it's touching your belly most of the time. Um, I mean, the the, the sensuality, the, the quality of, of uh, instruments are so different. Uh, winds, you know, like. Uh, if, but it's highly interesting. I, I have to say, I never really thought about it, but it's a uh, it's really really high, highly interesting. Let's keep it in uh, in mind. <laughs> Do you have any shows coming up in London? Uh, London, no, unfortunately. Brussels, if it's no, I'm playing, I'm showing the opera, but it's bizarre how disconnected the UK scene and the and the the like this Belgian, Germany, Holland, France scene are. There, is, there seem to be a little, um, you know, lead there, um, which is a pity because I think UK music is is always so brilliant and so interesting. I, I'm, I really wished I was uh, I was more more there. Manchester was a blast for me. It was incroyable. And I want to go to Glasgow, but this is this. Uh, I don't know why I say that. <laughs> but no, no, I don't. Uh, not in not in the future. I will. You. I'll let you know if ever. Thanks. Yeah, I wanted to tell you just something. That we are now thinking about um, exchanges. Uh, I live here in a, in a big, in a big studio where we actually host residencies and people. So, and we have a piano, like a, a stand, a front, uh, how do you call it, uh, piano droit, like a, a, like a student piano, not, not like a semi big one, like, but we have piano, we have amps, we have like uh, recording things. I mean, you can come and uh, we're very happy to have people around. So if you need time and space and you're a person, queer person and you want to meet sex positive queer people, please. Um, Tell us. Ah, I know. I think we're we have one minute to go. My yeah, my mail is easy. It's Gerald with dot Kurdian, my name, and gmail.com if you want to meet, or you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my should I write it in the in the thing? Yeah, maybe if you can write in uh, in the chat like your email and some yeah, I don't know if you have your social media if you want everybody to yeah. follow kind of here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, be welcome. Um, Gerald XOXOXO XO is the, the social media. Most of them also almost uh, answer this uh, same uh, name. And uh, my mail is uh, Gerald. I mean, of course, it's gmail.com and not slash com. Voilà. <laughs> And maybe uh, we have just uh, a time just for Ines's question. What would you say is the position of your investigative practice relating to mantras and more religious singing? Ah, yes. Uh, so, yes, yes, very good uh, question. Um, well, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm a superstitious person, but I'm not a religious person. I was not raised as a religious person. So as I said, I have doubts and I have, um, I'm skeptical in some places. What I'm interested in is the possibility to connect to things that are not speakable. So on that level, I think that the poetics that we are reaching when we write together or we we practice the practice that I share, shared with you, um, uh, they, they, it generates a mythology, it generates uh, a relationship between imagination and emotional state, it generates uh, a different kind of presence, a collectivity, and sometimes it also touches some something about the atmosphere. I don't, I don't know how to say, but it sort of changes the quality of atmosphere. I don't know what it is exactly, but I definitely felt it, and I, would, and I, I was not alone. So... Um, 
I I don't think we because mantra was mantra was the was the term we used really the three first weeks because it it felt like this sort of like rotative speech acts like something that was like a like a prayer or something that was that you could that you could have that, that was circular that you could keep in mind but that sort of was active so we didn't keep it because of course we were not connected to anything of the culture of mantra but um but something about the 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 delicacy and maybe the the way we the way we decide that the, the song is finished definitely includes the fact that it creates maybe something a bit magical but I, I don't know exactly what that means is something that is abstract um but it but it's as abstract as what tells you that a song is done or a track is done like what what are the parameters for you to define that the track is done um I guess every one of us here has one specific relationship to to music that allows you to say ah now the track is there and I I'm concluding it you know and I think the um, as I say I think the choirs answer a need for us to connect to sing together to vibrate together and maybe to to feel together and that's and it's all these parameters which can be felt as be, being a bit spiritual for people who want to put that imaginary there. But for me, it's very, it's it's quite simple. It's really about togetherness in, uh, in, in the artist uh, um, uh, using art as a way to build togetherness on many, many different layers, you know? So um, that's that. I hope I never become a guru or something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Gérald. Thank you very much. Super, super nice My pleasure. Uh, to Thank chat you. with you. And um, I'm sure if the participants have any questions, though, they can just email you or. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or Feel come free. see you in Belgium. Yay! I mean, I'm playing 20, 25th, like playing 22nd in Ghent, in Voreut, at Vierneville, and uh, 25th, 26th in Kai Theater in Brussels. So there you go. They have to come. Yeah. <laughs> bah oui, of course. <laughs> merci, so Gérard. Merci, merci beaucoup. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.